I've had this Black Pearl Diversity receiver now for a little while and thought it was worthwhile me putting together a uh, little video to show you the main benefits and features. I think it's fair to say at the top of the video that I really like this product. I think it's an awful lot of technology in it uh, for the price and works really, really well. So first of all, what we'll do is we'll look at what comes in the box. We'll look at the ground station, how I've configured it and how I'm using it. It makes the ground station uh, really clean and easy to use. Setup is a breeze when you get to the field. Then we'll spend a little bit of time as part of that also looking at the connections and uh, how you wire this thing up and other bits and pieces. We'll have a quick look in the menu, talk about how you access that and the kind of things that you can do. And then finally, we'll talk about uh, alternatives to this technology and a quick summary at the end. So first of all, let's talk about what's in the box. The box itself is only slightly bigger than the unit. Um, nicely protected if you open the box then underneath the tray that you have the uh, diversity monitor in then underneath that you have some other bits and pieces you have two AV cables and two power cables which initially is a bit confusing but then actually you realize that one is for power in but interestingly it also daisy chains so one is power out as well and we'll look at that on the ground station in a sec then uh, you also get this little manual. The manual is very basic in my opinion. It's the thing that kind of uh, lets this package down a little bit. It kind of tells you what's going on, but it, you know, the slightly uh, pigeon English in places does make you uh, um, have to kind of think to understand what it's trying to say. Okay, so that's the box. Um, the only th extra thing that you do get is this little screen. Um, it's a snap together screen that goes round, um, but rather than let's look at it here, let's look at it on the ground station. So here's the ground station that I've been using. It's on the top of a pretty standard um, cheap and cheerful tripod. Um, it's connected to the tripod by a standard quarter inch um, brass screw thread at the bottom which is great it makes it very easy to connect and um, here's the screen actually installed you can see it uh, sh shields the screen really well it's quite deep um, so you have to just make sure the angles are right and then at the top there's the two antennas one is a 5.8 um, well they're both 5.8 one's a circular polarized and the other is a whip antenna although actually when I use it at the field I use a 5.8 helical which gives me more distance so the things we'll talk about here let's talk about the left hand side first of all this is where the power goes in it actually has an integral battery I think it's about a thousand milliamps that you can charge and that will keep it running for quite a while um, you can also connect this to a very wide range of voltages and um, actually power it. So most of us will have a 3S LiPo somewhere. I'm actually using a 2700 3S LiPo here um, connected into the power in and that will pretty much run it for the majority of the day with the internal battery as well. Above the power in, there's the power out. The power out um, does allow us, as we said before, to daisy chain power to run something like a DVR. I think that's a really nice idea because I'm a bit of a freak when it comes to keeping cabling neat on things like ground stations. I hate those ones that have wires everywhere and lots of cable ties and foam. So that's that side. That's pretty straightforward. On the other side, then here we have the uh, connections in and out for the video so the top three connections are for the AV out and there's the AV out for the antenna 1 and antenna 2 and then there's the diversity AV out underneath and the diversity AV out is the one we want to use if we're connecting goggles or a DVR be aware though that the diversity AV out is only activated when you put it into diversity mode and we'll look at how that's done in a sec. Underneath that we have an AV in so if we have uh, something like a DVR then we want to view back flight information that's where we'd connect it to and then underneath that we have a HDMI in as well which is a, a nice touch because this actually is a 1080p 7 inch screen it's a really nice screen so you would be actually watching it in full HD 
So those two AV cables that came in the box would uh, fit into these AV in and out ports and then you connect the RCA connectors to whatever you want. However myself what I've done is I've made this little custom cable and um, it gives me a jack at three and a half in a three and a half millimeter four pole female that connects to the external quantum hobby king goggles um, and because on a bright day I prefer the goggles to be fair and um, it also then gives me the right audio channel out onto this RCA connector and this RCA connector goes down to the iPhone and the iPhone's on the ground station because it actually um, captures and records all of the telemetry data from the Easy OSD that I use on my bigger quads. So now we've done that, let's talk about um, the menus and the buttons. So the menus along the uh, the buttons along the bottom allow you to get some bits and pieces. The buttons on the bottom are pretty straightforward. Left is power, and when you press and hold the power button, it fires up. You uh, have the charging status light here, just the left of it. And then you'll notice that by the side of each of the antennas at the top, there's a blue LED to show you which of the aerials has been used for signal. But next to the power button, there is the mode button and then the um, up and down, which is actually the volume and then the plus and minus, which changes the channel that you're listening to. To get into the menu, um, it's not the M button because that's mode, it's actually a short press on the power button will get you into menu and here you can set the bits and pieces for the colour, the saturation, whether or not there's digital noise reduction, whether or not it's displaying in 4.3 or 6.9. You can go through all these bits and pieces but the really important one here is at the bottom which is where you select the band that you're listening to for the AV. Now this is a full 32 channel receiver, it will receive all of the bands available in A, B, E and F channels. If you um, want to know more about that you can watch my other video, I'll just put a thumbna the thumbnail of it here in the bottom right hand corner, but that goes through the full mapping. Uh, but bottom line is if it's Immersion RC or Fat Shark, you probably want band F, if it's Boss Cam you probably want band E. But you set that in here both for diversity mode but also for the individual um, AV um, aerial 1 and AV2 aerial 2 modes and you can have uh, different bands if you wanted to so if you had um, you know a boss cam receiver and a fat chart you could switch between the two. And there are a couple of nice things on here as well. Um, you obviously, in terms of the horizontal width, the way that the picture stretched, you set that in the menu with the whether or not it's 4.3 or 69. And if you want to zoom in because of the vertical, the, uh, you need to stretch the vertical axis. If you just press and hold the plus button, that will do it while you're viewing the video. So as you can see here, it makes for a really clean neat ground station takes seconds to set up when you're at the field and um, works really well. So now we've looked at it and we've talked about the main features and the bits and pieces then let's talk about the alternatives. So before I invested in one of these things I've been using a homemade ground station and here it is it's this uh, converted briefcase it has a uh, really nice actually nine inch screen at the top nowhere near the resolution of the Black Pearl. It's, it's actually a um, screen to go in a car for a reversing camera and it's got a DVR and other bits and pieces in here but at, for reception it uses an Uno 5800 for an immersion RC. Now I could have got diversity receiver here, here and just upgraded this existing equipment by buying a Duo 5800. The thing is a Duo 5800 is about £176 and the Black Pearl was just over 155 So not only do I get diversity on the Black Pearl and, I've, and the diversity works great but I also get the battery, the screen and everything else and um, although I am a big Fat Shark and Immersion RC fan um, after reading all of the rave reviews about the Black Pearl, I, um, I plumped for one. I'm glad I did. 
So if you didn't want to go Black Pearl, the other things you could do is you could make a system like this and you could buy a screen for £40, and the mounting bits and bobs to put it on a tripod for about £20, and then the Duo 5800 for about £176. So for the best part of um, £240, you can have something that would do a similar job. Um, but I must admit, having it all in one unit and having it only cost £155 was a no-brainer for me. Finally, the two things that I would have liked to see on here that maybe you don't know in the next version and an idea for the supplier is that um, only having one diversity out is a little bit disappointing. People want to potentially view the flights using goggles and also use a DVR at the same time. The ability to have those two things running in parallel without having to make cables up would be great. And then the last thing is um, having an onboard DV recorder would be handy too. Some of the other models out there that aren't quite as cute have them, um, but I would um, you know like to see that in so that then you don't have to have any other equipment externally. Just a point at the end: the AV out cables, um, because I've made the AV cable that actually connects from the black pearl up into the goggles and down into the iPhone one of the things that I noticed chasing out the connection so I could make the custom cable was that they the pinouts on the black pearl versus the immersion RC fat shark technology that you might see is slightly different so here's a um, the pinouts for the three and a half four pole jack for immersion RC and here is the pinouts for the black pearl and you can see that they've actually swapped the two audios around at the very tip of the three and a half inch connector three and a half millimeter connector now the the reason that that's important um, is that if you're going to use something like easy OSD where it actually transmits the telemetry data through the right hand audio then if you want to um, connect just the right hand audio so you can view that data in live time through an Android or iPhone or PC device then you just have to be aware of that because if you um, if you assume it's going to be the same as Immersion RC, you'll actually be pulling out the left-hand audio, which won't work. So in summary then, great piece of kit, really like it, so glad I made the investment. Makes setting up at the field a lot easier and the screen itself works fantastic and diversity gives me more choices for slightly longer FPV flights. So thanks for watching. Please comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, pop them below. Or if you want to talk to me about this, my Help Out channel is available.